Yeah, we got a little boss fight on our hands. Alright, so maybe we'll try the gloop gun. Let's get everything fully loaded. That and that and that. Okay. And oh, there's that door. Maybe that has a terminal. And that's why we brought that. Great work. All right. Let's put that back on. Yes. Hacking skill too low. Oh, 60 out of 91, so we can't hack it. Dang it. I don't think I have anything for hacking. No. All right. So we can't get in here. Maybe if we had uh, Vicar, we could do it. Is he the hacker? Um, but so, yeah, I guess if you have enough hacking skill, you can just disable him with that password we grabbed back up there. But uh, we don't get to do that. That's fine. We're going to have to fight him. So. Let's do it. All right, we're going to save here. <laughs> Saving every 10 feet. And bump, bump, bump. Okay, where did I go? Boink. And cute. Ooh, he's way up in the air. He's got that little blue thing on his back. Right there. Oh, reloading. Dang it. Gonna get him. It's got to be the thing. We got him. And we didn't die. Woo! Alrighty. What's he got? Hibernation chamber key. Sweet. These guys are all going to come awake? <laughs> or not? All right, now what we got to do. You would have needed all three passwords. Awesome. Yeah, we kicked some butt on that, dude. All right, we're going to do another little quick save here. And now where do we need to go? Sophia's up there. Okay. Now, why are these guys all down? I'm afraid they're all going to jump up. I wish I could just take their... Thing. That would be bad. I have a feeling. It just might happen. But I... No, if I'm looting them all, that means they're dead. Right? It's all this stuff. Oh, that's their launching things. Oh, he keeps bringing... The, oh, those are the ads? He keeps bringing the waves of those guys, beats most people. You slowed at him and managed to attack his back. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a pretty obvious little spot, but um Yeah, the blue gun I think helped a lot. These girls were pretty awesome too. Let's get the gloop gun out again, speaking of. Right. She's right there. So I wonder if we're going to get a little dialogue option. 
or is it going to be straight to fighting? Why won't you straight to fighting. Everyone all right? That didn't go well for her. <laughs> that did not go well for her. Chairman's key. All right, we're on TV. Hi, everybody. Uh, don't fall for the board. Uh, be free. <laughs> Resist. <laughs> They're not as powerful as you think. Okay, so... Use. Yes. And yes. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind. Apparently. And I can't begin to thank you enough. Mm, are you kidding? The board never stood a chance against me. Ah, all of the day's <laughs> work for you, huh? You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Great. And I was just about to pop up with some drinks and celebrate. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. What's next? Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. So we've got to make do on our own. Seems to me that'll make us stronger in the end anyhow. There you go. You're quite right. We've got no choice but to make do on our own. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? You guys were really depending on I'm Earth? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're it seemed kind of that way most friend. of the time anyway. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Okay, we have a lot of work on ahead of us. We'd best get started, but let's uh, see what he's got to say. Wait, hold on. I need to ask you something. Yes, yes, certainly. I'll help however I can. See if these are any good. Mm, what do you think happened? I don't know what happened, but something must have gone horribly wrong. I don't know why Earth's gone silent. I don't even know if Earth exists anymore. We have no connection back to Earth, and return is likely impossible. We're completely alone out here. Well, there'd at least be cockroaches and bacteria back there, but how do you know all this? I heard it from Akande herself. She tried to pressure me into joining her side, you see. Tried to make me realize that all hope is lost, and that we are alone. She was half right. We are alone, and we're going to have to fend for ourselves. Because there's no telling what's happened to Earth. You mentioned a frigate disappearing? You might have heard of the Earth Directorate's frigate. Half the colony's entire military was on that ship. They were returning to Earth when they vanished without a trace. That was two years ago. We haven't heard a word from them since. Whatever happened to Earth likely happened to them. We're just going to go through all these. You said there haven't been any new messages from Earth. Yes, Akande mentioned as much. Earth hasn't sent us a single message in three years. No one knows why. Akande had kept the truth to herself, perhaps with good reason. Can you imagine what would have happened if word got out? We'd have utter pandemonium. There's something else. I know about the other colonists, Phineas. I wasn't trying to hide the truth from you. But after all you've done, I owe you an explanation. Yes, I experimented on the Hope's colonists. Each of my experiments ended. 
in catastrophic failure. Each of my subjects died in agony. You are my first and only success. I didn't tell you about the others because I didn't want to burden you. My failures are my own to bear, not yours. I forgive you, Phineas. I mean, what was he to do? He was trying to wake him up. He had to figure out how. I don't think uh, he has much guilt to bear for that. Thank you. Perhaps in time I'll learn to But it means myself. a lot that it affects him. My apologies. I need to get a hold of myself. We've far more pressing issues to worry about right now. If you have any more questions, ask me. I'll answer as best I can. Mm, nope, I don't have any more questions. We've got work to do. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds, and then we're going to fix this damn colony one problem at a time. All right. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? <laughs> the first one is I've got plans with the chairman in my pocket. No one's going to know I'm running the colony. I think we're on live TV, though, aren't we, at this point? So I'm going to run this colony myself. I've already convinced the chairman to take my side. You can count on me. I'll help you revive the other colonists. I'm going to do what I've always done, whatever I want, all the time. <laughs> I'm not sure what the difference is between these. Um, I don't want to keep the chairman as a front person, because why would I want to do that? Um, three seems the most generic. I'm not saying anything about the form of leadership. I'm just going to say I'm going to help. So I say let's go for three. You can count on me. That sounds solid enough, right? I'll help you revive the other colonists. For sure. And maybe, am I stepping away from leadership, though, if I do the other ones? Do I want to run this colony myself? Do I really want to be in charge? That's not, uh, wouldn't be the funnest thing. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um... I don't know if it really matters much at this point either. Four is the only one that seems like it's drastically going the other way. Um, but oh, what the heck? Let's take charge. I'm going to run this colony myself. I've already convinced the chairman to take my side. The chairman? Oh, I don't know why you let that heartless creature live, but I'll have to trust your judgment. You're the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to lead this colony, you have my support. We're not a colony any longer, are we? Our last connection to Earth has been severed, and so we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? <laughs> All right. The OSI, the OSI teaches, teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope's scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. 
Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Between MSI's worker-centric policies and the iconoclast manpower, Sanjar and Zora were able to rally many of the Terra 2 townships to their cause. MSI's Look at them banding swell, together. And the I did that. enjoyed a significant <laughs> surge in their ranks. The board was too distracted by infighting and internal politics to stop MSI from becoming a powerful corporation and a refuge for townships that might have fallen through the cracks. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took Sublight Salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing oh, board no. <laughs> officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers docking bay silenced oh. her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. The collapse of Edgewater left its workers bereft of any purpose in life. Most of them made their way to Adelaide Medellin oh, camp, hoping to ingratiate themselves into her favor. Adelaide accepted only a few to her community. Oh no, Adelaide. The rest were turned away and likely died of starvation. Nevertheless, Adelaide's camp grew into well, a she did have a little evil in her. Adelaide McDevitt refused to cooperate with the ongoing effort to save Halcyon from collapse. A sympathetic deserter yeah, what's stole wrong a copy with her? of her research and delivered it to the Hope's scientists. Good. It is unclear how useful Adelaide's research was. An optimistic estimate suggests her work may have bought Halcyon another few years of survival. Adelaide would never know. She died that winter. Hmm. Under I was the thinking they would be the hope for Tennyson, food. The groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave Junlei the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. That's good. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. Oh, no. <laughs> it was a dark time indeed. Dark time. You have to work to survive. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people. Sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her All own. All right. She hired Captain a small Ellie. crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. <laughs> life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Millstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. I thought this was there the was grand no revolution. There was no great awakening for the colony. No celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Hmm. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. I like how they're wrapping everything up he here. As he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar, known as Max, eventually decided that it was time to move on to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless, unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself. Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, Junlei bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker. And Parvati, enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, <laughs> agreed. What about the my stories mechanic? of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. 
Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and June Lei were never far apart. Yeah. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The sanitary that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation <laughs> and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. Wasn't too worried about Sam. This led to a boost in Sam unit sales. Did you know that Sam units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning Oh no, we got a corporate beyond? pitch even in the wrap up. Minister Clark was released from house arrest, and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. Hmm. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Nice. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Excellent. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. Breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Happy endings. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Who wear those silly Today, masks. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon, but for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? I have to decide what game I'm playing next. You brought an end to the riot on Tartarus and partnered with Chairman Rockwell to run the colony together. As Halcyon looked toward the future, you remained a constant presence in the colony's administration. You were never weighed down by bureaucracy, and you never had to dirty your hands with politics. You had people who did that for you. Excellent. By your influence, Halcyon survived the turbulent years that were to follow. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we did it. Wow, okay. So that was one possible ending of The Outer Worlds. So I'm... That's really cool that they did that wrap-up there. Thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, that's really cool they did that wrap up there. And I'm really interested in how many endings they actually wrote. Um, definitely the decisions I made, even at the very end, influenced what's, what happened at the end there. I'm glad they didn't just end it after the conversation with Phineas either, that they actually kind of spelled out what happened. And now that I've been through this, I'm kind of interested to watch other people and see or you know do some other playthroughs myself and see what other possible endings you can have i mean i'm sure they have somewhere like you know the board prevailed thanks to you and all everybody was put into cryo hibernation forever while a few elite lived on the remaining supplies <laughs> and all kinds of other possible endings and i like that they wrapped up the story for each of my companions as well um so yeah this was a really great game it is a great game i had a lot of fun with this playthrough really glad i did it 
I also really enjoyed the, uh, that it's kind of finite too, that you can put a lot of time into it, um, but then it's, the, then it's done. Although, you know, all the upgrades and everything I did, it'd be great if there was a sequel where you can kind of go from here with what you've built up to this point. Because you spend, you know, the whole game getting up to level 30. I guess you got a chance to uh, put that to use in the final, uh, the, the jail there, in the labyrinth, which I thought we actually managed to get through remarkably smoothly. Those persuasion skills really helped at the end, that we didn't have to kill everybody, and they really help you out a lot, too, with the, um, the different factions, if you've got that reputation. So we, had, we were revered by a lot of factions at the end, so that probably had an influence on whether they came in to help or not, and they'd distract people. We managed to run past a lot of the guards without even having to fight them, or then talk our way through some of them, even though we shot them in the face first. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty funny. And yeah, at the end, the boss, the science weapon, the gloop thing, which we, I had leveled up to level 35, helped a lot. And it kept him bouncing up and down, um, which really helped. And apparently, according to Old Men here, we didn't even have to deal with the ads. And that would have been really hard if we had all those different drones to fight. So yeah, that's my recommendation. Bring the gloop gun. Crazy mom, thank you very much for the cheer. All the little hearts. Really appreciate that. So yeah, thank you everybody who came through this journey with me. We finished it. I'm going to be putting it up in half hour episodes on YouTube. So definitely uh, if you missed some of the parts, you can check it out there. Um, and if you came in at the end and you want to see the whole playthrough, I tried to keep it moving the whole time, but I definitely took my time with it. I'm interested to see, actually, at the end, how much time I spent. I don't really know right now without looking up in them. Um, actually, let me pull up Epic real quick. Um, let me see. Let's pull up, let me pull up the Epic Launcher and see if I can get a number on how long I spent. Let me see. My library... And the Outer Worlds. What do I got? 49 hours. And an hour and a half of it I redid. So maybe two hours. So 47 hours contiguous playtime for me. So they said it was 15 to 40 hours. I definitely took it on the slow track. And, um, you know, because I wanted to get the most out of the game and that's my usual style anyway but yeah i'm gonna wrap it up here thank you everybody who watched till the end of this stream or to the end of these episodes on youtube i've got to decide what i'm gonna play next so but i've got this one done it's a little sad to be done but i definitely enjoyed my time with it so thank you very much everybody I'm going to put up a few things in YouTube in the community section, maybe even do a video, just kind of getting people's input on what to do next, I think, or maybe I'll just do what I want. <laughs> we got some dialogue choices here for the future. But again, thank you for watching till the very end. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.